This is Elsa. Elsa is a red cage stinkhorn mushroom in the fungal family Falaceae. Elsa would like to show you something. She's a bit nervous. We're all friends here, Elsa. Go ahead. There you go. <laughs> Let's pause for a second. If you've never seen a stinkhorn before, here's a video of a kitten and a puppy. Just to balance you out, let me back up a bit. Mushrooms are the fruiting bodies of fungus, and their job is to disperse spores out into the world. Many mushrooms create spores on their outsides. Those spores are then launched into the air with mechanisms that almost act like tiny little t-shirt cannons that you might see at a game of sport. Other mushrooms of gastroid fungi develop their spores inside their bodies. These mushrooms have different strategies to get their spores out into the world. The puffball, for example, needs a little squeeze. Oops! <laughs> the stinkhorn, which is also a gastroid, really went the extra mile. When the stinkhorn fungus is ready to fruit, it forms what are called eggs. These eggs are apparently very fun to cut open, because everyone does it. As the egg matures, all parts of the mushroom are formed, but they are packed together tightly, like some insanely folded fleshy origami. When the moment is right, water is pumped into the egg through the real body of the fungus, a network of silk-like hypha called mycelium. These connect to the eggs through thicker cords called rhizomorphs. The water pressure causes the cells in the eggs to rapidly expand. At a rate of up to 5 millimeters per minute, the stinkhorn unfurls amazing honeycombed lattice-like structures. Like the hollow bones of a beard, they are both strong and lightweight, in some cases able to break through asphalt. Jerry, I feel like these remind me of something, but I just can't… it's on the tip of my tongue. No, oh, it's on the tip of your tongue too, Jerry. Well, I'm sure if it's on the tip of both of our tongues, it'll come to one of us. If it comes to you first, Jerry, just spit it out. You can think of these rapid expansions like the blowing up of a bouncy house, with one exception. You may have noticed the oozing slime. <laughs> yes, there it is. This slime is the <laughs> oof, I'm sorry. This slime is the centerpiece of the stinkhorn strategy. This gelatinous substance is called gleba, and you can see it here forming on the outside part of the egg. The gleba contains the spores of the stinkhorn fungus, and that is because, like flowers, stinkhorns enlist the help of insects. But these insects are metal, like flies. They don't want pastels and the scent of lavender, more like vomit and the smell of rotting flesh. And that's just what the gleba smells like. It's kind of like a cave troll took a stab at inventing a daisy, or a person with a sinus infection put an M80 in his nostrils. Either way, it is a thing of beauty to the flies. Attracted by the scent, they gather on the stinkhorn and feed on the gleba. In the process of gobbling it all up, their tiny little fly feet are covered in the spores. They will carry the stinkhorn spores to new sources of food on the forest floor. It's all over rather quickly. Within 48 hours, all the little spore babies are off into the world, and the stinkhorn mushroom's job is done. Jerry, I still can't put my finger on it. But that's how it always goes. You can't put your finger on it all day. And then you're in bed at night and it just pops up out of nowhere. A pen is useful to have by your bedside. You know, so you can write it down and not forget it.